though, I would think that is not always a now, shame, though, I would think that it's not always a negative emotion to have. For example, you know, when you're growing up and somebody's shame on you, but you did something really wrong. Right. Uh, let's take a serious offense like pedophiles or criminals or assassins. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it good for them to feel some shame? No. Okay, tell me, tell no. me about that because some people think, well, some people need to be ashamed. Yeah, I get that. Right? Yeah, because you know, I'm with the people that want them to feel bad. Right, <laughs> but, right, right. Um, here's what we know that the people that you're talking about um, are the shame in their lives probably is at the root cause of those behaviors. Mm -hmm. Shame is far more likely to cause destructive behaviors than it is to cure it. What we know is that shame is highly correlated with addiction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. violence, aggression, bullying. Um, it's not helpful to be ashamed for this reason, and I think this is really a core thing that we need to get our heads and hearts around as a culture. Shame corrodes the part of us that believes we can change. So to shame someone into changing is like saying to them, you are horrible and worthless and you're not capable of change, get better. Mm -hmm. Right. Now guilt yeah, on the I other hand. Right. you gonna get better, right. Right? Right. right? Guilt, big fan of guilt. Guilt is yeah, guilt. you explain a little bit of the difference between guilt and shame, but can you re explain again? Yeah, this is hugely important. Shame is I am bad. Guilt is I did something bad. Right, and there's a difference. There's a difference Huge between difference. focusing on self and focusing on behavior. Guilt is when you hold something you've done or failed to do up against who you want to be, and it doesn't feel good. But what we know is when people make amends or change behaviors or apologize authentically, guilt is the motivator for that. We no rarely shame. see shame. Interesting. Right. So people should be feel guilty as opposed to feel ashamed is yeah. what you're saying if, if they did Absolutely. something wrong because there's a difference between the person and the action. Absolutely. Um, you like to call yourself more a vulnerability researcher than a shame researcher. Why is that? What does vulnerability have to do with all of this? It's interesting. <laughs> Yet another term that no one likes. <laughs> I'm like, my husband. Yeah, my husband's always like, can't you find like a something researcher that's like a good thing? <laughs> um, I'm like, I'm, I'm working on it. Um, I think you know we talked about connection. Right. And I think if you think of connection as the thing that gives purpose and meaning to life, on one end you have shame, and on the other end you have empathy. I think what moves us between these is vulnerability. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay. Vulnerability is about. How do we sit with uncertainty? How do we sit with fear? You know, I tell people in the workshops and the lectures I do, if you can figure out who you are when you're backed into vulnerability, it's one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself and the people who love you. Why? Well, I'll use myself as an example. A lot sure. of my work this last year personally has been about who am I when I feel vulnerable? And one of the things that I realized is that I, I have a tendency to armor up when I'm vulnerable. I have a tendency to get very academic, make sure all my initials behind my name are all right, ratcheted right. up, but right. you know. Um, and that's how I protect myself, but that moves me towards disconnection. So who do you become? Do you disappear? Do you lash out? Do you armor up? Do you people please? Who do you become when you feel vulnerable? Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a really powerful thing to know about yourself and also is absolutely instrumental to shame resilience.